When you need something to lean on, a walking stick can provide the necessary support. Wooden walking sticks have been coming in handy since primitive times. The first versions were likely crude branches, but they've evolved into something much finer. Today's wooden walking sticks are designed to support the user in style. There are rustic versions for the outdoor adventurer and distinguished looking ones for getting around town. But whatever the style, a walking stick adds stability to the human journey. It all begins with these three-year-old saplings. These ones are chestnut, a lightweight and durable wood. Once the sticks have been peeled and dried, it's into the washing machine to scrub off any dirt or mold that may have accumulated. And it's not your usual washing machine. This one is a long tank sized specifically for these sticks. A worker closes the lid tightly so no sticks will spill out as the tank rotates in a trough of soapy water. After a few minutes of tossing about, these sticks come out squeaky clean and they're ready for the steamer. The sticks are steamed for 20 minutes and this makes them soft enough to bend. So next, he secures the stick and activates a spring-loaded arm. It wraps one end around a form to curl it into a crook. He ties it so it holds the crook shape and retracts the bending arm. This crook will serve as the walking stick's handle. A century ago, crooks were formed entirely by hand, which took brute strength. But with the invention of this nifty machine, the job became a whole lot easier. Next, it's over to a device called the straightening horse, because it's used to straighten the stick shaft. This job does take a bit of muscle, as the worker wrenches the shaft between posts to set it straight. With the shaft now quite linear and the end curled into a crook and still tied, it's time to set the shape of this walking stick. And so, it's into the drying room for a couple of days. The temperature in here is around 80 degrees Celsius, and as the sticks dry, the shape solidifies. A worker then cuts the stick to the correct length, and he also pairs down the end to prepare it for capping later. He also sands down the knots in the wood, creating a smoother surface. From a simple sapling to a cane shape, it's quite a transformation, and it's not over. The next worker exposes the wood to a flame just long enough to blacken it. This is staining without the chemicals, and the finish is distinctive. He now turns the walking stick against a very sharp circular blade to carve spirals on the crook and down the shaft. It's a candy cane look, and achieving it is a bit tricky. This is where on-the-job experience counts. Another worker then trims the end of the handle crook. The cutoffs won't go to waste. They'll help fire the factory furnace. Next, a worker inserts the crook in a machine that works like a pencil sharpener, except the blade inside rounds the end. This process is called nosing the stick. The stick that started out as a peeled sapling now looks dramatically different. A dip in water-based lacquer gives this walking stick a high gloss. They hang it to drip dry for an hour, after which the walking stick is ready for the end cap or ferrule. Ferrules come in a variety of styles. There are blunt ones for a good grip on indoor surfaces, and there are pointed ferrules for navigating rougher outdoor terrain. After hammering the ferrule onto the stick, he drives a nail through it to secure it. These walking sticks are now complete. All that's left is to hang around until the orders come in, and those orders are usually very specific. Customers get to choose the length of stick that's appropriate for their height, as well as the style and finish they prefer. From a simple stick to a dignified looking cane, it's been quite a journey. The path ahead may be uncertain, but with one of these walking sticks in hand, a person is well equipped to make his or her way in the world.